detectives from the Los Angeles Police Department sought and obtained a warrant for the arrest of O.J. Simpson, charging him with the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Lyle Goldman. I read how the L.A. District Attorney charged O.J. with the murders. I believed my brother was involved, but who in the hell was going to listen to me? Meanwhile, investigators for the defense found signs that pointed in Glenn's direction. This is where the murder happened. Straight across the street was Nicole's place. The most significant witness in the whole case was Tom Lang. Lived down the street, he came up to this corner, started to walk across the street, gave a verbal command to his dog, and he spotted Nicole Simpson. He locked eyes, as his words, he locked eyes with her, and then went that way. He also noticed a man in an angry stance right in front of her gate, um, and he described that person as either white, Asian, or Hispanic, but definitely not African American. He saw a white Ford F-350 vehicle parked in the street. It would be my wish to find out who it was that was driving that Ford F-350. Letters and pay stubs show that Glenn was living in Hollywood and working for a company fixing houses and painting across the city. As a painter, Glenn had access to a white pickup truck like the one seen at Nicole's place. And there were more clues tying Glenn to the murders. We felt throughout the criminal case and to this day that that killer came from the world of Faye Resnick. Faye Resnick was a friend of Nicole's. Faye Resnick was a, a drug user, a drug abuser, uh, a drug addict that had gone into treatment. She hung with people from a very dark world. Glenn told me that he had set up Faye Redmond and Nicole Simpson, and they met him at a Van Nuys nightclub. He set him up to rob him. Whether or not he was going to kill him or not, I don't know. He expected just the two girls to be there. But I guess the Ron Goldman showed up. At the time, I had my suspicions, but I didn't know how he did it or if he really was the killer. It'd be years before Glenn would say what really happened. Glenn, did you do this? One-on-one, -on -one, talk to me in person alone. Did you do this, Glenn? Did you kill those women, Glenn? One-on-one -on -one alone. You don't you don't the At the jail, alone. you interview me. Did you kill the women? You hear me? Get Did you the kill car. these women, Glenn? No. Well, we took him to the state police post, and he wanted to know what we were there for. And we said that we were there because of, we had four to five homicides. He said four or five, maybe 70, he's up to 70, like about 70 people. These five that we knew about, and that he's told us now there's more. Six weeks after OJ was found not guilty, the law caught up with Glenn. It wasn't long before my brother was dropping hints about his past crimes. First time I heard about Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman's murder, I was in my office in Van Nuys and really thought nothing more about it. One day I did receive some letters from a prison inmate indicating that um, Glenn Rogers had written to him that he had met Nicole Brown Simpson and the inference was, and you know what else. We forwarded it immediately to the O.J. Simpson uh, prosecutors. Authorities ignored clues leading to my brother, and it would be years before Glenn came back to that story. <laughs> Now, Glenn added a twist that he never told me. A husband's anger over a high-dollar gift that had been kept by his ex-wife was behind it all. 
Glenn told the criminal profiler he was paid to steal back Nicole's diamonds. Can you show me a set of earrings that would cost approximately $20,000 about 20 years ago? O.J. Simpson allegedly hired Glenn Rogers to get into the house of Nicole Brown Simpson and get a pair of earrings. Essentially, his belief was that they were worth $20,000. Glenn Rogers explained to me that he had parked his white pickup truck, a Ford pickup truck, uh, on a side street right by the side of the condo. He explained that OJ knew of a spare set of keys in the rear of the condo. Once Glenn got the keys, he then crouched down just past the front of the gate. At that moment is when Ronald Goldman walks through the front gate. Glenn Rogers realized that Ronald Goldman suddenly became an obstacle that needed to be dealt with. He struck him with a large knife, incapacitating him, and threw him against the tree. It was not something that I had expected Rogers to say. He said that upon her entering into the fray, he stabbed Nicole Brown Simpson once, and she fainted. He charged Goldman and pushing him against the tree where he later was found deceased. He said that he pulled her hair back to expose her neck and pulled the knife once to sever her neck to kill her instantly. Okay, anything? If Glenn's story was true, it had to be something at the crime scene to show he'd been there. And sure enough, evidence came out in the Simpson trial that two men were there. Shoe prints spelled out a story in blood. And the Lorenzo. FBI agent William Bodziak went halfway around the world to find these expensive Italian shoes he said are similar to the ones that could have been worn by O.J. Simpson to commit the murders. Bodziak examined the bloody footprints found on the walkway outside Nicole Brown Simpson's condo. They matched the soles on the exclusive Bruno Malley shoes, he said, and the size of Simpson's tennis shoes are a perfect fit. But the shoe prints that looked like OJ's weren't the only ones there. It's possible to identify here a design that resembles a shoe. Yes. Nationally known forensic scientist Henry Lee identified a second set of shoe prints. What could be a mystery murderer. By the time OJ had gotten there, two people had bled significantly onto the sidewalk. If OJ Simpson told me I did it, I would want to know how. You got to explain to me how you did this in less than six minutes and got rid of the weapon, the clothes, the bloody clothes. How did you do this? Impossible. Somber members of the Brown family attended a candlelight vigil, marking the first anniversary of the death of Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman on June 12, 1994. Family members wore angel pins in memory of Nicole, who had collected angel jewelry before her death. I remember the pin. Mom said Glenn sent it to her. And when she went to trial, he wanted her to wear it. In 2010, I would got another letter from Glenn, and this is what it says. At my trial, Mom has on that black vest top, and pinned to it is a gold angel with a diamond in its hand. I sent that to Mom the day after the situation in Brentwood. It's something everyone missed. I believe that that angel pin is absolute proof that Glenn killed Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. The same pendant taken off her body, the same pendant that my mom wore on her vest into the courtroom in Hillsborough County Jail. In 
18 months after he was captured, a Florida judge sentenced Glenn to death for killing Tina Marie Cribs in the Tampa 8 Motel. May God have mercy on yourself. On July 16, 1999, California sentenced Glenn for the murder of Sandra Gallagher, who was found in her burnt out truck. Now this man not only attacked our daughter, he brutalized her, he raped her, he set her on fire, killed her. This man does not deserve to live. After that last trial, my brother became one of the few men in America sentenced to face two separate executioners. And because of that, other families like those of Linda Price in Mississippi could never get their day in court. Just about every other state where Glenn was suspected quietly dropped their investigations, 